in problem 204, we have two different characters, John and Mary. We have John on the left and Mary on the right. And the problem says that John and Mary were, were both paid X dollars in advance to do a certain job together. John worked on the job for 10 hours, while Mary worked on the job for two hours less than John. So Mary worked eight hours. Mary gave John Y dollars of her payment. What that means is Mary lost Y dollars and John gained Y dollars. If, uh, okay, so Mary gave John Y dollars of her payment so that they would have received the same hourly wage, so that the two wages are equal. What was the dollar amount in terms of Y that John was paid in advance? So what is X? Okay, well, how do we solve this? First thing we will want to do is cross multiply, and we get 8x plus 8y equals 10x minus 10y. Now we solve for x by uh, moving the y to the left side of the equal sign and the 8x to the right, and we get 18y equals 2x. And when we solve for x, we divide both sides by 2. And we get x equals 9y, which is e. Number 205 looks like this. And they give us one point here called p, and that's 4, 0. And they tell us that this is o. And the question says, in the rectangular coordinate system above, if point P, no, if point R not shown uh, is lies on the positive y-axis and the area of the triangle ORP is 12, what is the y-coordinate of point R? They tell us that there is a point somewhere on, on, on this y-axis called R. We don't know where it is, but that it creates a triangle and that the area of this triangle is... 12. And we are trying to solve for this. Now we know that since it's on the y-axis, this is going to be 0 comma x, where x is this line. We know that this is 4. What we don't know is where r is and how long this line, this segment here is. Once we can find out the segment, we know exactly where uh, this point is on the y-axis. Luckily, the problem gives us the area of the triangle. And as you know, the area of the triangle is length times uh, width divided by 2. In this case, we are going to have x and 4 divided by 2 equals 12. That becomes 2. We get 2x equals 12. x equals 6. So our answer is going to be 0, comma 6 or maybe just 6. And in the answer choices, B. 206 says car A is 20 miles behind car B. So here's car A. And it is 20 miles, car A is going there, and it is 20 miles behind car B. So this one's car B. And car A is traveling at a constant speed of 58 miles per hour, while car B is traveling at a constant speed of 50 miles per hour. How many hours will it take for car A to overtake and drive 8 miles ahead of car B? So we are looking for A to bypass B and go ahead by 8 miles. So how do we solve this? Well, first of all, you want to make sure that you always write down what it is we're looking for. So we're looking for hours. That's what we're looking for. Looking at the two different speeds, we can see that A is faster than B, right? The car, car A is, is, is going at a higher speed, 58 miles per hour versus 50 miles per hour. That means every hour, a is closing in on B by eight 
miles per hour. So if we set up a simple chart, uh, we get, well, let me set, set up a chart. One hours, two hours, three hours, four hours. Okay. We know that after one hour, this 20 mile gap or 20, 20, yeah, this 20 mile gap will have diminished by eight miles. So there's going to be 12 miles between them. After the second hour, it's going to diminish by another eight miles. So there's going to be four miles between them. And I figured this out simply by uh, subtracting eight from 12. What happens in the third hour? Well, there's only four miles to go before A is even with B. And we know that every hour, uh, it, it catches up by eight miles per hour. So that means halfway through the hour, A has completely caught up with B. And then for the second half of the hour, A actually goes beyond B by four miles. So by the end of the third hour, A is ahead of B by four miles. We are looking for, uh, what are we looking for? We are looking for eight miles, right? We are looking to figure out how long it will take, how many hours it will take for A to actually be ahead of B by eight miles. And by the third hour, uh, by the third hour, it's already ahead of B by four miles. If you just look in the answer choices now, there's only one answer that is past three hours, and that is going to be answer E. Two hundred and seven says for the past n days, the average arithmetic mean daily production of a company was fifty units. If today's production of ninety units raises the average to fifty five units per day, what is the value of n? So they told us that there are so for the last n days they produced some number, and the average of the production was fifty units. They also tell us that today's production of 90 units, so today they produced an additional 90 units. Uh, today is an extra day, so n days plus 1 plus today. They said that that raises the average to 55 units, so it went from 50 to 55. What is n? Simple. Let's cross multiply. We get x plus 90 equals 55n plus 55. Let's get rid of the x since we're solving for n. And we can do that by cross multiplying here to get x equals 50n. Plug that into this second equation. What we end up with is 50n plus 90 equals 55n plus 55. Subtract 50n on both sides and we get 5n. Subtract the 55. And we get 35 and then we simply divide by 5 to get n equals 7. And n equals 7 is answer E. Number 208 says if x, well, actually, let me write out this uh, fun little equation they have at the top. Okay, if x doesn't equal 0 and x is not equal to 1 and x is replaced so x is replaced by 1 over x everywhere in the expression above then the resulting expression is equivalent to what so let's uh, let's plug this in first and see what happens 1 over x plus 1 over 1 over x minus 1 squared that is, well, since 1 is x over x, what we're going to get is 1 plus x over x over uh, 1 minus x over x squared. Cancel out the x's, and we get 1 plus x over 1 minus x squared. If you look on the answer choices, this is not one of the answers. This, uh, if you look at a, b, c, d, and e, it, this just doesn't appear. The trick is, uh, in the question itself, they say equivalent to. Whenever you see equivalent to, what that means is if you were to plug in a number for x and you were to plug into that plug that number into all of the answer choices, 
one of those answer choices would give you the same number as what you got from your equation. If you look in, 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 in the five answer choices, A is going to be the right answer. And A says x plus 1 over x minus 1 squared. You might look at the 1 minus x and the x minus 1 and say, well, isn't that going to give us two different numbers? It would if it wasn't for the exponent. Whenever you square something, whether it's positive or negative, it's going to end up as a positive number. So when you look at a and you try to plug in a number, let's suppose x equals 2, what happens? 2 plus 1 is 3. 2 minus 1 is 1. Square that, and you get 9. You plug the x minus 2 into your own equation, you get 3 up at the top, and you get negative 1 on the bottom. You square that, you're still going to get 9. And that's why A is the correct answer. Number 209 has a triangle. And then there's a line here. Those are right angles. Y degrees, Z degrees, and X degrees. And they say in the figure above, z equals 50. So z is 50 degrees. x plus y equals what? This question obviously tests your knowledge of uh, both triangles and uh, how angles interact with each other. So what we know is that this angle is going to be equal to this angle. And we know that this angle plus this angle, I'll call it, uh, I can't call it Z, I'll call it um, W. This angle plus this angle, it's going to be 180. So using that knowledge, we can figure out what X plus Y is. So this is 50 degrees. That means uh, this angle is 50 degrees. 50 plus 90 is going to be 140 degrees. 180 minus 140 is going to be 40 degrees. So we know that this angle is 40 degrees. Why do we need to know that this angle is 40 degrees? Because we know that when there's a line, that is always going to be 180. So since that's 40, x degrees must equal what? 140. So we know x equals 140. We don't know what y is yet, but the same property applies. 180 minus 50 is going to be 140. No, actually, it's going to be 130. Ah, oh, bad math. 130. Z they gave us as 50. So we figured out what y is, and we figured out what x is. They're asking what x plus y is. So they're asking what 140 plus 130 is. And that's going to be 270. 270 is answer D. All right, well, I'll continue this in the next video.